It's a song of praise to the Maker. The thrush sings high in the tree. It's a song of praise to the Maker. The gray whale sings in the sea. And by the Good morning, Easter people. Welcome to Rincon Congregational United Church of Christ virtually. We may not be sitting next to each other in the pews, although we are still gathered together as church. We are church. And we're so glad that you're here this morning. For no matter who you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome in this community of faith. And as we gather for worship this morning, we take a moment to honor our relations. For thousands of years, indigenous people have lived on this land. The relationship with the land and the creatures and the plants and the spirit that infused all of that is the center of their lives. So we name and honor these people. Apache, Hopi, Mojave, Paiute, Navajo, Anasazi, Tahona O'odham, Yaki. 
And we remember that for thousands upon thousands of years, plants and animals have lived on this land, their home. We name and honor these beings, some of them, saguaros, Gila monsters, Palo Verdes, Lucy's warblers, lizards, and so many more. It's important that we remember all these are relations, our elders and siblings in life, and may our remembering help us unclench, to open, uh, to relax, loosen our concepts of ownership, to relax our attitudes of superiority, to open our hearts to sharing and to strengthen our hands to loving stewardship of this beautiful creation. Christ is risen. Cristo ha resucitado. Christ is risen indeed. In verdad ha resucitado. Alleluia. bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, our dear God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, God made their glowing colors and made their tiny wise and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, our dear God made them all. The purple-headed mountain, the river running by, the sunset and the morning, earth brightens up the sky. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, our dear God made them all. The cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, God made them every one. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, our dear God made them all. We come before God not just as individuals, but as a people. We come before God now to clear the slate, so to speak, knowing that God receives us in love as individuals and as a people who share in our collective shortcomings. And so we pray, gracious God, who made the covenant promise with our ancestors, we gather today a rebellious people. We want to act out your intentions for us, but we keep, keep getting mixed up by all the glitter of the world around us. You tell us to honor creation and we use other people and animals and plant life only to meet our wants. You offer daily bread to every living creature and we steal that bread from our brothers and sisters in the name of greed. 
You promise us new life, and we shrink back from it in fear. Heal us, God, lest we destroy ourselves and all our relations. We need your presence among us. Amen. And in silence we pray. Forgiven and set free by the risen Christ, may Christ's life flow through you, body, mind, and spirit, so that you might be an agent of life and life abundant, here in this place and in every place, now in this day and every day. May it be so. Hello, young people. I'm glad you could be with us this, for this Sunday worship. And I thought in our time together, we read a book called The Desert is Theirs. It's by a woman named Bird Baylor, who lives in Arivaca, who's just a little bit south of us in Tucson. And there's pictures in here by a man named Peter Parnall. 
So here we go with The Desert is Theirs. This is no place for anyone who wants hills, soft hills and meadows and everything green, green, green. This is for hawks that like only the loneliest canyons and lizards that run in the hottest sand and coyotes that choose the rockiest trails. It's for them. And for birds that nest in cactus and sing out over a thousand thorns because they're where they want to be. It's for them. And for hard skinny plants that do without water for months at a time. And it's for strong brown desert people who call the earth their mother. They have to see mountains and have to see deserts every day or they just don't feel right. They wouldn't leave even for rivers or flowers or soft bending grass. They'd miss the sand too much. They'd miss the sun. So it's for them. Talk to Papago Indians and Papago is an old name that uh, white people gave to the people who lived here. Those people call themselves Tohono O'odham, so that's that's what we'll say today. Talk to Tohono O'odham Indians. They're desert people. They know desert secrets that no one else knows. Ask how they live in a place so harsh and dry. They'll say they like the land they live on, so they treat it well, the way you'd treat an old friend. They sing its songs, they never heard it, and the land knows. Ask why they choose a place where life would be so hard. They'll say that once at the beginning of time, Earthmaker patted out a dab of dirt in his hands and a greasewood bush grew there. Greasewood, so you know it was desert. You know it needed desert people. Even then, Coyote was around giving advice and scattering seeds on the sides of hills. Where he dropped those seeds, you see saguaro cactus grow now. Spider people were there too. When the new world wobbled, they sewed earth and sky together. It's together still. And here's, here's the spider people weaving their web to keep the earth together. Buzzard made mountains with his wings and Gopher buried a path to lead people out of the underworld and up, up, up into the fierce white sunlight. Elder brother taught the people how to live under the sun. He gave them the ceremonies they would need for bringing rain. He even taught them what songs to sing to touch the power of the earth, their mother. And he taught them to share the land with animals and birds. Remember, animals were here first, so they know how better than people how to live. Their wisdom is older. They're more at ease in a de desert place, the Indians say. You can tell it's true. Look how badger burrows into the cool, dark earth while humans have to walk in the heat of the sun. And here's Gopher cooling off in the earth while the people are walking in the desert. <clears throat> Look how Hawk floats on the wind while people plod slowly over the rocks. Tohono O'odhams try not to anger their animal brothers and sisters. They don't step on a snake's track in the, in the sand. They don't disturb a fox's bones. They don't shove a horned toad off the path. They know the land belongs to spider and ant, the same as it does to people. They never say, this is my land to do with as I please. They say, we share. We only share, and they do share. A deer likes the same sweet seeds and wild berries that Tohono O'odham children hunt. You'll see doves dipping down for the juicy red fruit that grows high on a cactus, and you'll see 
Tahona or Odom children hold out their hands for the same summer treat. You'll see pack rats hiding their treasure, their good mesquite beans, but they can't have them all. People are storing them too. Pack rats and people both know to save some for tomorrow or later. The desert gives what it can to each of its children. And here's that beautiful cactus fruits, the huaro fruits, and the Tahona or Odom people are harvesting it for food. Women weave grass into their baskets and birds weave it into their nests. Men dig in the earth for soil to make houses, little square adobe houses the color of the hills, and lizards dig burrows in the same safe earth. Here animals and people know what plants to eat when they are sick. They know what roots and weeds will make them well again. No one has to tell coyote or deer, and no one has to tell the Tohono O'odham people. They share in other ways too. They share the feeling of being brothers and sisters in the desert, of being desert creatures together. A year that is hard for people is hard for scorpions too. It's hard for everything. Rain is a blessing counted drop by drop. Each plant finds its own way to hold that sudden water. They don't waste it on floppy green leaves. They have thorns and stickers and points instead. Yucca sends roots searching far, far underground, farther than you'd ever dream a root would go. And saguaro is fat after rain. Fat with the water it's saving inside its great stem. Give it one summer storm. It can last a year if it has to. Sometimes it has to. And there's that fat saguaro full of water, saving up for the summer. The desert's children learn to be patient. Hidden in his burrow, kangaroo rat spends each long day waiting for darkness to cool the desert where he runs, just so he runs sometimes. A weed may wait three years to bloom, just so it blooms sometimes. A toad may wait for months to leave his sandy hiding place and sing toad songs after a rain, just so he sings sometimes. Desert people are patient too. You don't see them rushing. You don't hear them shouting. They say you plant happier corn if you take your time and that squash tastes best if you've sung it slow songs while it's growing. They do. Anyway, the desert has its own kind of time that doesn't need clocks. It's the kind of time that snakes go by and rains go by and rocks go by and desert people go by too. That's why every desert thing knows when the time comes, celebrate. Suddenly, all together, it happens. Cactus blooms yellow and pink and purple. The Tohono O'odham begin their ceremonies to pull down rain. Every plant joins in and makes, even the dry earth makes that sound of joy when the rain touches. Hawks call across the canyon, children laugh for nothing, coyotes dance in the moonlight. Where else would people, desert people, want to be? And here they are in this beautiful desert land where we also get to live and help take care of it too. And that's the end of the story. I hope you liked it. Good morning. Today I'm going to be reading from my Holy Bible Concordance I received in 1964 at uh, from the Church of the Attitudes in Phoenix. The Wolf and this is, I'm sorry, Isaiah 11, verses 6 to 9. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. 
and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The sucking child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. We also hear another testimony by Terry Tempest Williams in an essay she wrote called God, Nature, and the Great Unraveling. I believe in both God and nature, God in nature, God within the majesty of our own breathing, pulsating bodies. We are not separate. The Great Unraveling inspires a letting go of all we have been taught as our ego begins to untangle itself from what it has created to a deeper understanding of what has been created before us. This unlearned moment becomes our awakening. Earth underfoot replaces heaven above. Well, happy Easter. It's still Easter season. Happy Earth Day. And yet, how can anything be happy while a disease runs amok around the world? We're mostly isolated in our homes. We wonder whether we'll contract the disease. Essential grocery items are unattainable. Economic insecurity is a concern. and people are dying among those who are recovering. We know people are dying. We feel our vulnerability in life and the facade of our being in control and always protected has been torn away and we just don't like it. This is no time you might be thinking to be saying, don't worry, be happy. And if you are thinking that, you're right. This is no easy time, no time for easy cliches. It is, though, Easter and Earth Day, both of which speak to something deeper, more meaningful, and for us humans, more difficult. And that's change. Let's call it transformation. Transformation. The first Earth Day was 50 years ago. Born out of one senator's dismay at witnessing a massive oil spill in Santa Barbara, California. And he knew that it shouldn't be this way, that something had to change. And 50 years later, we're still saying we need to change to protect Earth. Easter. Easter is all about new life. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. And new life is all about change. Whether the disciples, including the women, actually saw the risen Jesus in the flesh, or whether the spirit that moved that Jesus, that person Jesus, somehow broke into them in a whole new way, they were changed into bold living, those disciples, all of them, including the women. They were transformed. This Earth Day, <clears throat> this Earth Day is almost overlooked in the midst of the pandemic going on. And yet we overlook Earth only at our peril. Well, it's true 
that hundreds of thousands of people will die around the world before this pandemic is over, whatever over will look like. At the same time, every year, 700 million people die because of air pollution. And toxic air on average reduces human, li a human life by three years. And human made chemicals that permeate every aspect of our living harm the, the bodies and brains of all creatures, including humans. We're on the track for a global temperature to rise at least three degrees Celsius over the pre industrial temperature level. And if, if and when that happens, it will be global catastrophe for every species on Earth, including us. That change in temperature will completely disrupt economies, reduce food security, overwhelm healthcare systems, cause mass migrations of humans and others across the world. It will cause unimaginable death. And we know that we're already starting to see the effects of climate disruption. We're also seeing, even during this pan, because of this pandemic, that Earth is getting a breather. While we humans have to stay at home, which means, for example, we're not driving as much, we're not manufacturing as many things, the air around the world is visibly cleaner and clearer. I don't know if you saw the picture on an online news story recently of New Delhi, India. And one half of that picture, you could not even see buildings in, in the city because of all the smog and the pollution. And on the other side of that picture, more recently taken, the sky was clear blue. You could see all of the buildings in the city. Irrefutable evidence, those two pictures, that our human overconsumptive way of living is negatively affecting the atmosphere and it's also evidence that we can that we can change our ways to positively affect the health of earth this easter don't worry be happy changes to don't be afraid in the gospel called Matthew, first the angel at the tomb and then the risen Jesus says these words to the women on that first Sunday. Don't be afraid. Because of Easter, don't go back to the old normal either, as Seth urged us last Sunday. There's a real danger that as we emerge from the pandemic, we will simply revert to our old personal lifestyles of overconsumption. That will fall back to the old ways of running economies on fossil fuels. Be transformed. It's Easter. Each of us then can examine our personal habits. Do we have to drive so much? Do we have to buy so much, for example? And all of us can push our legislators and leaders in our cultures to reframe economic structures for justice and for sustainability, for investing in renewable energy, for banks to not fund fossil fuel projects. The Creation Care team, by the way, if you're interested, can provide postcards that you can send to your senators, urging them to work for uh, a full transition in this country to renewable energy. We can do this. And also transform our view of our place and purpose in creation. We are not the center of the universe, thanks be to God. We are interwoven with all of our relations in this 
astounding web of life. We are co-creators of life with God. How invigorating, how freeing, how earthy this truth is. Sally McFaig writes in her book, The Body of God, this is the hope against hope, that the source and power of life in the universe is working in and through us for the well-being of all creation, including our tiny bit of it. As Terry Tempest Williams recognizes, God is in nature. We and every creature and plant and grain of sand and rock are infused with God. We embody God. And as Jesus did, we make love visible because we remember that God is love. So don't be afraid. We don't have to be afraid. Simply love. Love God. Love nature. Excuse me, love nature, which includes all our relations, both human and other than human. The Interfaith Power and Light organization has a campaign going now that they call Love Made Visible. And part of that is a piece in which we can donate money for plants to be, to, for trees to be planted in different places around the world, places like some of our national parks in the U.S., places like Zambia, where our own Kathy Padilla lived many years working with people. And I'll make sure uh, there's another link for that in, uh, in our church news. So planting trees, pushing our representatives, uh, and when we are able to, uh, going and rewilding the property that we've been entrusted, where our church is, church building is. All of these are some ways that we can be love for all of creation that we can love into reality. Isaiah's vision, such a vision. When the wolf shall live with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the lion and the fatling together and the little child shall lead them. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountains. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of God, full of the love of God, as the waters cover the sea. And so I say again, joyous Easter and blessed Earth Day. We come now to the prayers of the people this Sunday, and you will find in the written words that were included uh, that after each section, there is a congregational response in bold. And then at the end, there's one in which we close together. And after we complete those prayers, uh, we're invited for a moment or two to offer our own prayers if we wish in the chat room and as we read those all of us will hold those up in prayer in our own hearts and then i will close that out in the chat as well so will you please join me in the prayers of the people you my friends are the bold to bring new life to the land to restore the waters to refresh the air and together we join with the earth and with each other to renew the forests, to care for the plants, to protect the creatures. We join with the earth and with each other. To celebrate the seas, to rejoice in the sunlight, to sing the song of the stars. We join with the earth and with each other. 
to recall our destiny, to renew our spirits, to reinvigorate our bodies, we join with the earth and with each other. To recreate the human community, to heal all people, to promote justice and peace, to remember our children, we join with the earth and with each other. And together we close. We join together as many and diverse expressions of one loving mystery for the healing of the earth and for the renewal of all life. And those, those now who wish to offer prayers in chat for a moment or so, we will lift those prayers up with you. And then I will close in chat as well. We come to our time now and we will take an offering, receive our offering of our treasures for uh, the work of God through this church. That the love of God would continue to fill up and spill out from this sanctuary and from this people of faith. So we ask you virtually uh, if you would find a way to have your offering make its way to us either on our website or by mailing a check to the church, however you are moved and are filled with the Spirit, and we thank you. For all things bright and beautiful, for all things dark and mysterious and lovely, for all things green and growing and strong, for all things weak and struggling to push life up through the rocky earth, for all human faces, hearts, hands, and minds which surround us, for all other than human minds and hearts, paws and claws, wings and fins, for this life and the life of this world, for all that you have laid before us, O oh God, we lay before you our thankful hearts. In the name of the risen Christ, amen.
courteous lightly, using your gently, nourish the life of the world in our care. Gift of great wonder, how to surrender, trust for the children tomorrow will bear. We who in danger, who create hunger, agents of death for all creatures that live. We who would foster clouds of disaster, God of our planet, forestall and forgive. Let there be greening, birth from the burning, water that blesses and air that is sweet. Health in God's garden, hope for God's children, regeneration that peace will complete. God of all living, God of all loving, God of the seedling, the snow and the sun. Teach us, deflect us, Christ reconnect us, using us gently and making us one. Don't be afraid. Rather, be love for all of creation. And may you hear this day the song of God's grace unfolding the music of the world becoming, and the beating of Christ's own heart in, with, and under creation. Amen.
Tell! 